So, welcome back to another Believe in Voight with this Copperaja team that actually did alright in the previous episode. Got very close in the first one. Still need to pull off like the true Steel Surge and then Stealth Rock Pin. Kind of got that in the first episode. Like that Darmanitan, I didn't do any damage to that Darmanitan with an attacking move. Like they KO'd themselves with the hazards and their own recoil, but okay. Got some, some beat up stuff going. He has got the Cinderace. So maybe I need to go with Toad Kiss instead this time. Because I think I'm always going to be leading Hopperaja this week, most likely. We will see. But that's the intention. So I want to set up the Steel Surge. Which is pretty reasonable against his team, to be fair. My Urshifu looks okay. It's one of the best ways I have through the Duraladon. Venusaur is okay as well, but they would be able to outspeed control me, and I would have to bring the Torkoal, really. But even then, no, I don't, because they're going to outspeed me regardless, so surely it makes no difference if I bring Torkoal or not. Because Torkoal is okay, but not the best. So I think I'm actually going to bring Urshifu and Venusaur, even though this me means i got no, no speed control with the Sun or with Trick Room. This is an odd one. Maybe I'm fearing the, the Terrakion too much to bring Porygon 2, even though I probably should have brought Porygon 2. But here we are. Okay, now, do I go for a Steel Surge into the Cinderace? So are they going to go for a Pirate Ball? They're not going to go for an Airstream. I could surely just Quake, right? I want to yawn the Cinderace because that's most likely to Dynamax. Problem is, I've got no switch ins. If I yawn, I've got no switch ins for a fireball. So I think I need to just attack and follow me. And then I can put it into Sucker Punch range. They're not going to airstream. There's no reason to airstream this turn. Didn't. They didn't Dynamax. So we'll have to see if I KO the Cinderace. They surely can't KO my Togekiss. Moonblast and Ironhead probably will. But we'll see. That was an interesting not Dynamax. They set Tailwind for no reason. That's fine. And they did Iron Head. That is okay. This Tokus should survive a non-steel spike, right? Well, not non-steel spike, but, you know, just Iron Head. Yeah, that's that's good. This is still super effective. That is reasonable. It's not the worst of starts. Let's free that Venusaur a little bit. Glad I didn't go for Yawn. That would have been a bit of a waste. Protect and Quake would have been lovely, though. If he goes into Terrakion, he can't beat up, which is nice. So it has to be Urshifu, right? No, he went into Terrakion. Huh. Because now I get to go for a Steel Surge and still follow me. I can't let him beat up. But that was a... Strange switch, I feel. I'm pretty sure I survive a close combat. If he maxes, I definitely survive a knuckle. And he can't beat me up. Can't beat himself up. He will be beating the Togekiss Hunter if he goes for that. Have to see how strong the Kokoraja is as well. Will it be able to Oko Terrakion? Will it be able to put it into Sucker Punch range? It'll be close. I'm curious what the Flimscot's going to be doing. Nothing, which doesn't matter. That's fine. The problem is if he goes for Knuckle now, then that could be a bit awkward. But then I just bring in either Pokemon in the back, and like he can only KO one now. So even if he gets a beat up, 
and Cop Raja can't KO, then I still just Steel Surge and anything with the other Pokemon in double into the Terrakion. So this is still fun. It's Life Orb, so no weakness policy proc or anything. Will this KO? Will I put it in Sucker Punch range? That is Sucker Punch range, which is quite nice. But then I would lose uh, Shifu if he protects or max guards and moon blasts. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go into Urshifu and detect and steel surge the the Whimsicott. Because he's only got one life orb hit left in him as well. So if he does end up attacking my Copperaja, then that's also fine. Yeah, I'll go for steel surge. And because I expect max guard and moon blast into Urshifu. So I'm going to detect. And even if he doesn't, it's still fine because he'll KO himself to life orb. There we go. That was reasonable. <laughs> Too bad. So it didn't matter that um, I was going for speed stream. Or like that Whimsicott was useless. Like it set Tailwind for no reason. And it protected for no reason. So we take those. He didn't take any damage from the, the Steel Surge. But that also meant that the Strachion couldn't switch out. Which it never was going to. But still nice. Oh, oh, oh. Could reach Master. Is Copperaja going to be the one to, to reach Mars Master? Chansey wasn't good enough. Okay, we've got Pete number three in the way of Master. Okay. Could go Venus or Torkoal. I've been told that you're never supposed to leave those, but still. If I can take care of the Cinderace and the Urshifu, Copper Archer is freed up. just leads with redirect well not Amoongus but if he leads with Togekiss in the race then Venusaur isn't that great it's a tricky one could go like hard he's not bringing Amoongus and go follow me trick room but I don't think so I think he probably will still bring Amoongus I said I was going to leave Copperaja and everything, so I'm going to leave that along with Venusaur. I will bring Torkoal. And I'll bring Urshifu. Could be a mistake, but here we are. So I still have the Torkoal switch in, threatening the Chlorophyll immediately. I think that's one of the reasons why you, you don't tend to leave with both shouldn't tend to leave with Venus or Torkoal because you want to always be threatening this. And he is water as well. So I think really I should be going for a Dynamax with my Venusaur. Because I can go for Torkoal and Vine Lash. And I'm not seeing too many downsides to this. So I'm not actually going to be Gigantamaxing Copperasha in this game. Like I said, the, uh, if the Urshifu and the Cinderace go down, Copperaja is freed up. And even just non-Dynamaxed, Copperaja is still freed up. So, um, If he's Focus Sash, I will break it with the Vine Lash. So I think this is overall the best play. If he goes for Trick Room, I can just start yawning things for the Torkoal. If he's not Focus Sash, he doesn't even do any damage. And that would be interesting. Whether the Porygon sets up Trick Room or goes for something just like an Ice Beam into the Venusaur, which is reasonable. But the Vine Lash is going to start adding up. Okay, good. Are we going to see a Focus Sash? Is that a Focus Sash? I can't tell. 
It's definitely going down without the crit anyway. Okay, it was a focus attack. So he gets, he gets an attack off, but he'll, he loses Urshifu, which frees up Corporage a lot. It's just close combat. Like, that's not going to do too much to talk of. Psychic. Wow, okay. That ends up, that ends up being quite good, because I prefer... Venusaur out of Trick Room, because this means I get whatever attack I want to go for now with the Venusaur. Because if he set up Trick Room there, uh, he could have underspared. What did he have? Azumarill wouldn't threaten me. I guess the, Cin the Cinderace still would have done. Because it would still undersped the Venusaur even in Trick Room. Let's just hope, Kiss. That's okay. Oh, I want a Stealth Rock. Oh, I want a Stealth Rock so bad, but it's, it's not the play, because I can go for an Ooze. And boost up the Burning Jealousy, which will do even more damage. And the Vine Lash will really be adding up. But apparently my Burning Jealousy is going to be going first. So, fair enough. That is reasonable as well. So I guess I should have probably yawned the Porygon too. But if he's setting up Trick Room, I'm just going to do that next turn. So, that's fine. So, a bad Quick Claw activation then. There, but, you know... It's for a bit of fun. There are definitely better items. But I just like the idea of Quick Claw Stealth Rock. It's our weakness policy as well. Ooh, okay. That could be quite a viable Dynamax candidate, though. I just recover. That's still fine, because I still get to just go for an ooze now. Like, he's, he's got his weakness policy, he, so he would KO my Tokus, but will he be in range? Because I have just oozed. Even if he Dynamaxes, will he be in range? I think it'll be close, and I want to Burning Jealousy again. But instead, I'm going to Yawn the Porygon 2 this turn and go for a news. Because I believe in the Vine Lash as well. Not even a Dynamax, so that's fine. There was no chance of it surviving that, so... Just, just another psychic, because surely the talk I was putting him off from the open trick room. Yeah, he's just going to try attack. That probably KOs Torko. Okay, not even close with the critical hit. I guess he would have got the attack boost. I wasn't paying enough attention with the, da with the download boost. Which you always should be. You always should be paying attention. But then, if you know your team well enough, you don't need to pay attention. Because if I sent out the two Pokemon... Um, I would know if Porygon 2 got a, a attack or a special defense boost. There's the Azumarill, so that is good. That's what I have in the back. Copperaja and Urshifu? Urshifu, yeah. So the Azumarill is very likely to protect, but I still think I attack it. Because even if he goes for a protect... No, he would have to max guard to... No, he wouldn't, because I've lost the Dynamax now, so... But I am plus two, which is better. Body Press or Burning Jealousy? I'm not sure. I'm going to Body Press the Porygon 2. And just go for a Sludge Bomb. Okay, so he is Dynamaxing, but is this going to be a max guard? Because I didn't want to risk the accuracy of Lee Storm. I'm pretty sure Sludge Bomb at plus two would be enough. And even if it's not, it will be in range of anything. And if he doesn't Trick Room, then Torkoal will underspeed. But actually, it would make sense for him to target the Torkoal this turn in Trick Room, so. He didn't Protect. Yeah, and a plus two Sludge Bomb was, was enough, so I didn't need to risk the Leaf Storm, which is nice. I should have one more turn of Vine Lash as well, so Body Press into Vine Lash probably could get close to KOing the, the Porygon. But this time he's going for Trick Room, so even if, even if not, then I just Body Press again. No, not even close, but... A Vine Nash hit into Body Press will KO, so maybe Venus or Torkoal is worthwhile after all, even though I've been saying saying bad well been saying bad things about sleep powder. Vine Nash is good. Vine Nash is undeniably undeniably good. But I just hate sleep powder, even though I'm running sleep powder at the moment. So pretty comfortable two games there. Quite happy with that. Copperage got to 
do pretty well in the first game, and then it was a Venusaur uh, sweep in the in the second game. So not too bad, not too bad.